Okay, hi there, uh, Jeff here. In this video, I'm going to take you through some key stats on the UK economy, especially if you're revising for your exams and you just want to have some numbers, a bit of data to hand, which will help impress the examiner. So no charts, just some stats. So inflation, one of the big topics at the moment, obviously inflation went up to 11% in November. It's now down to 10.1% in the year to March. So inflation hopefully starting to fall in 2023, although it may well remain higher than forecast. Lots of cost and price pressures remain in the UK. Inflation, 10.1%. Now, 2023 might be a year of recession for the UK. It's likely that there's going to be a shallow downturn if it happens. In 2022, GDP in real terms, that's adjusted for inflation, grew by 4.1%. So it's pretty strong for the UK. The average growth in the UK is about 2%. The economy did even better in 2021. It grew by 7.6%. But of course, that was the year, the first year after the uh, coronavirus pandemic lockdown. So that was a kind of rebound from a very difficult year in 2020. But growth in the UK definitely slowing. 4.1%, pretty strong in 2022. Most people think uh, the UK will kind of flatline for the next 12 months, little or no growth. Bank of England has been raising interest rates. They've increased the base rate of interest in each of their last 11 meetings. The base rate has now gone up to 4.25%. It's the main monetary policy interest rate. And that's the highest interest rate since the uh, the global financial crisis of 2008 onwards. Now, the key thing really is how much further have base rates got to go? Will the Bank of England continue to raise interest rates, for example, up to, let's say, 5% by the end of the year? Or will a fall in inflation uh, and, and signs of a softening economy encourage the Bank of England to maybe pause their interest rate increases and hold base rates where they are at the moment. Unemployment in the UK is low, both historically and also relative to many other countries. It's, it's lower, for example, than in Germany, which is 5.5%. The latest rate of unemployment is 3.8% of the labour force. And that figure has just nudged up a little bit in the last few, uh, few weeks. Signs, perhaps, that... The impact of high inflation, the impact of falling uh, real incomes and slowing growth in the economy is now causing unemployment to, to nudge a little higher. Again, how much further will unemployment rise this year? Will it rise above 4%? Probably 5%, I think, less likely. Now, wages have been rising. The pay of people getting their pay slips each, each month has been going up. Obviously, strikes and things have been in the news. A lot of people have settled for 4 or 5% wage growth. Wages growing about about 6%, just under, which is pretty strong, but, of course, less than inflation. So in real terms, people are earning less now than they were a year ago. Real wages, wages adjusted for inflation in the UK, fell by 3% in 2022. It's a key stat. How much does it cost the government to borrow money? Point six, the yield on 10-year debt. That's the interest rate, effectively, the government pays when it borrows money for 10 years to fund its own spending. The yield on government debt, again, has come down a little bit, certainly since last year. It's now 3.4%. And, of course, if you take off inflation, then uh, in real terms, the bank of uh, the government sorry, can borrow negative, at negative real interest rates. The yields come down a little bit, partly because the exchange rate's gone up, partly because inflation hopefully will come down. And the signs the government has got more of a grip now on macro policy, in particular uh, fiscal policy. The exchange rate against the dollar, of course, a lot of things we import are priced in dollars. And back in the autumn of 2022, the pound was in free fall. It was close to, getting close to one pound buys one dollar. I think it reached about one dollar five at some point in September last year. Just recently, it's it's climbed. It's now at a 10-month high, touching $1.25. Now, that's a good bit of data to know for the exam because think about the consequences of, a, of an appreciating exchange rate and all kinds of things, including the cost of imports. The price of oil and gas, for example, is priced in dollars and euros. So if the pound goes up against those currencies, the things that we import just become a little bit cheaper. And another key stat to take into the exam is the minimum wage has gone up. It's gone up by about 10%. So obviously in real terms, it's basically flatlined, but in nominal terms, it's now above £10 an hour. For older workers, aged 23 years and above, it's now £10.42 per hour. Of course, the living wage is higher than that. That's a voluntary wage paid by uh, employers. 
On the budget side, uh, the government has been trying, obviously, to try and get to a handle or control on, on the amount it borrows. It borrowed 15% of GDP in 2021, uh, which, of course, was largely the result of the contraction of GDP during the pandemic. And the huge spending on the NHS, on furlough, on other, on other policies to offset the, the, the enormous shock the economy experienced during lockdown. So the budget deficit in 2022 was 5.2% of GDP, which is still pretty high. Uh, the government's hoping that that will come down in 2023, although they've had to spend billions again on support for households during the energy price increase. National debt, the total accumulated debt of government, is now $2.2 trillion, which you, know, you get a different measure if you look at various definitions of debt, but it's about the size of GDP. So the government's national debt is about... 100% of GDP. Don't worry, the examiners aren't going to fact-check every single bit of data. It's, a, it's, a, it's about the size of the economy. What is going up is the tax burden. So the government has raised corporation tax from 19% to 25%. And critically, they have frozen tax allowances. So the income tax allowance that you get is now frozen until 2028. Now that means with wages rising... Remember, wages gone up by 6% in the last year. More people are now paying tax at 20% and 40%. So the tax burden is higher. Taking all taxes as a share of GDP, rising to 38% of GDP by 2027, which is a post-war high. And again, that has lots of consequences potentially for living standards and uh, growth in the economy. Uh, the UK is running a huge trade deficit in goods, $231 billion excess import demand in 2022. The, partly the offsetting uses 0.5 there. We had a huge surplus and a record surplus in services. We're very good at things like business services, creative arts, financial services, so on and so forth. But you see the gap there, the gap between imports and exports, the deficit in goods significantly higher than the deficit in services. So we ran a big trade deficit. And overall, the current account, which also includes primary income and transfers, was 3.8% of GDP in 2022, and it's going up. It's likely to be above 5% this year. Our export sectors in particular are being affected by slow growth in other countries and also by the, the non-tariff barriers that are part and parcel of the decision to leave the European Union single market. Britain's competitiveness ranking, published by the World Economic Forum, that's gone down uh, in the last year. We were 18th in 2021. And we've dropped to 23rd. Now, this is a peer-reviewed measure. It's not necessarily significant in the wider scheme of things. But it may be a sign there that the British economy is less competitive on a range of indicators uh, than it was a few years ago. We're dropping now out of the world's top 20 for competitiveness. And again, it's one of those little, little stats that the examiners love if students put in the answer on competitiveness. If you, if you know what our ranking is, put it in your answer because it's going to show really good application. And GDP per capita, $46,000 measured at PPP. Well, OK, UK economy is flatlining. Per capita incomes have barely increased in recent times. United States well above us at 70k. Look at Ireland there. Now, Ireland, of course, is affected by huge inflows of profits from transnational corporations trying to take advantage of Ireland's low corporation tax rates. So a lot of profit shifting taking place, which adds to their gross national income. But Ireland seems to be booming at the moment. Again, they've, they've been through this before, before the financial crisis. Uh, they're inside the European Union, of course. They're inside the single market. It seems that the Irish economy is benefiting quite significantly uh, from the UK's departure from the European Union. And their per capita income is now well above the UK. In fact, it's almost double that of the UK, which is staggering, although a lot of it is to do with the incomes from the profits remitted back to Ireland by transnational corporations. There we go. Thanks for joining in. I just thought I'd just take you through some of the key stats on the UK economy for those of you gearing up for exams. If you found it useful, I'd love it if you pressed like. Uh, that would be fantastic for others to find the video. And uh, stay tuned, stay happy, stay curious, and uh, see you sometime soon.